Ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is who you think it is, the voice of God. Welcome to the apocalypse. No, just kidding. Please welcome to the stage, Ian Harris. Thank you guys, thank you for coming. Yeah, this is how the world ends, I guess, right? Is this it? Is this uh, 72 and sunny? Um, and for those of you who don't know, the, the Mayan calendar ended today. The Mayan calendar cycle ended today. So people thought that the world was gonna end. Yeah, that's because a calendar ended. I don't know about you guys, every time my calendar ends, which is every December 31st, <laughs> Uh, this is what I do. First off, I don't panic. <laughs> then I go to the store and I buy a new fucking calendar. <laughs> it's awesome. You guys can get any kind you want. I personally like ones with like puppies and kittens and cool vocational outfits like fire kitty and police dog, but that's me, I'm weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, seriously, in the last, you guys know this, in the last 2,000 years, we have had over 300 documented historical apocalyptic claims, 300 in 2,000 years. In the last 30, 67. <laughs> Hal Lindsey three times, Harold Camping six times. We had uh, Gene Dixon, uh, Pat Robertson, Charles Manson, uh, Y2K. We had, let's see, the Catholics, the Seventh-day Adventists, <laughs> the uh, Mormons, and the Jehovah's Witnesses have all predicted end times. And here's the one thing that they all have in common. They are all absolutely full of shit, okay? <laughs> yes. Because we're not fucking going anywhere. We are here. Yeah, okay, maybe in the next one to five billion years, the, the sun might grow too hot for life to remain here on Earth. That's true. But here's two facts. One, we won't be around to witness it. <laughs> two, it will have nothing to do with any gods punishing us for our lifestyles, okay? <laughs> Like, I actually was bought into it for a little bit because everything I've read about the apocalypse is it always comes with seven plagues, the seven plagues of the apocalypse. And I did notice that there was one person that was introducing plague after plague upon this world. That person, of course, was Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Look at all the shit she's littered our planet with. She's given us Deepak Chopra, she's given us uh, The Secret, Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz, that Jenny McCarthy vaccination bullshit. And, and the worst one of all that almost killed everybody was when she gave us uh, the wuss music extraordinaire Josh Groban. What the fuck was that about? That guy sucks. First time I heard his music, I almost ended my own times, all right? That guy's horrible. Every show with Oprah was like this. Everybody, look under your seats. Oprah got you a present. Look under your seats. Yes, what is it? <gasps> misinformation, yay! Oprah got you misinformation. You get misinformation, and you get misinformation. Everybody gets misinformation. Oprah's on. <laughs> what the hell would the seventh apocalypse, like the seventh plague of Oprah? What would that have looked like? It would have been some like spiritual guru, self-help guy who like kind of a cross between Steve Brule and, and, uh, and you know, Barry Manilow who claimed to fix relationships at the molecular level by singing faggy music, right? Like it would just be some kind of like a misinformation Voltron with like arms made of comforting notions and legs made of old wives tales and a head full of false promises and fear, right? And at the core would have been like a lack of critical thinking skills and religiosity, because that's what's at the core of all this shit. I almost didn't make it, like apocalypse or no apocalypse, I almost did not make it here tonight because my car started giving me trouble. And I don't know about you guys, but I would rather miss my own special than take the bus in Los Angeles. I, uh, <laughs> holy shit. I've taken the bus recently in like several cities, and, and I don't know if you guys know this, in certain cities, they're putting coupons on the back of bus passes. Like grocery store receipts, they, they do that. They put like the coupons on the back and they're doing it to be cruel because they're printing shit on the back that people who ride public transportation could never use. Like 10% off an oil change or a, a free car wash, a $5 smog check. It's like, I don't have a car, you dick, okay? How about giving me something I can use like 
20% off walking shoes. How about that? Yeah. Imaginary friends ride free. You got one of those coupons? How about two for one deodorant for this fucker sitting next to me? Can we hook that up? Yeah. I'm on the bus. Coupons were totally racist, too. All the coupons were printed in Spanish. Like, that's bullshit. What are they trying to say? That, that all Mexicans ride the bus? I live in an all Mexican community in Los Angeles. I can tell you for a fact that all Mexicans drive an 87 Chevy Astro van, okay? So, with rims. So, that is racist and bullshit. I believe racism still exists today. A lot, a lot of my friends don't believe racism exists. I call them uh, white people. <laughs> yeah. The, uh... Conversely, all my black friends think it's 1953 and we have separate water fountains still, right? <laughs> I kind of think it's in between, don't you? It's like, it's more subtle nowadays. It's, a, it's almost like, like subconscious, right? Like I got a friend, he's totally racist, but he doesn't know it. He just thinks he's a patriot. Like, hey man, uh, what are you doing for Cinco de Mayo? He goes, Cinco de Mayo? I ain't Mexican. Okay, like, yeah, you don't have to be Mexican to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. He's like, do you have any idea what Cinco de Mayo stands for? Do you have no, any idea what it's about? I'm like, yeah, I believe it's the day that the uh, Mexicans won a battle against the French. It's like, exactly. <laughs> and I, sir, am an American. I don't celebrate another country's cultural heritage. Anyway, I'm still recovering from St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, too much green beer and shepherd's pie for this white man. Same guy purposely fucks up Spanish phrases, right? And Spanish as like a protest against the language. Like, where'd you eat lunch today? He goes, El Polo Loco. Like, dude, you know it's El Pollo. He goes, I ain't Mexican. I don't use Mexican phrases. Last time I checked, El Polo Loco wasn't an American phrase either. <laughs> if you're gonna protest the language, shouldn't you like at least like translate it and let the rest of us decipher your racism? Where'd you eat lunch today? Crazy chicken. <laughs> the, the crazy, the crazy. <laughs> I get it, you hate Mexicans. Uh, <laughs> just not their food. Okay, I can deal with you now. I know what I'm doing. Guy does it with names, too. He fucks up names. Yeah, this is my gardener, Jose. Dude, you know his name is Jose. I ain't Mexican! I pronounce my J's as such. <laughs> but the thing about names is that you can't, you can't change a name because a name is a name. It's the name you're given. It's not language specific. Right? You can name your kid whatever you want. I, I could name my son. If I had a son, I could name him... Blip Blap. I don't know. I can make up a name. Doesn't change. If Blip Blap goes to Africa, his name doesn't become like or something like that. His name is still Blip Blap, the nonsensical name that I gave my imaginary son, okay? But that's where I see racism now. You know what I see? Most of racism is against Hispanics, and it's because the whole Mexicans coming over here and stealing our jobs. And we know that's bullshit. We don't want those jobs, right? We know that. We don't want, we don't want the, right? No, seriously. We don't want that job like like, you know, like, like uh, you know, working in a field or, or, or picking produce or, you know, selling useless shit on the street corner. We don't want those jobs, all right? If you're really worried about someone coming across a border and taking your job, we should be looking north. Especially me, I'm in the entertainment industry. If you're a writer or an actor or some form of chubby humorist, Canadians are a fucking threat. Seriously. I've, I have actually heard stories like this. Like, yeah, man, I had a good career. I used to be a writer for Saturday Night Live till some goddamn Canuck come across the border and take my job for 80 cents on the dollar. <laughs> Never heard the opposite of that. Never heard one of my white friends go, yeah, I had a good goddamn career. I used to sell Naran Jazz on the street corner <laughs> for $6 a bag. Till some dang beaner come across the border and start selling his Naran Jazz for $5 a bag. What kind of deal they get on Naran Jazz in Mexico?
I, mean, I can't get them cheaper than 450 and that's wholesale. I got 18 kids and two wives to feed. I got to turn a profit. And where are all these Mexicans that are stealing all of these jobs? Has anybody been to a city that has an all-Mexican police force? <laughs> of course, we wouldn't know. They don't need no stinking batches. But uh, <laughs> let's... An, an all-Mexican fire department? Fire breaks out, and one 1987 Chevy Fire Astro truck pulls up, and they... <laughs> 4,000 guys, like, pile out of the back, tunnel their way into the fire. Have they taken over the stock market? Am I unaware of this? Today in the stock market, Dow Jones is down 500. But commodities are skyrocketing due to the speculation of Naranja futures. <laughs> Soybeans are down, jumping beans are up. <laughs> don't get me wrong, by the way, I'm not PC. I don't give a shit what you say. If you want to, like, use a word, use a word. If you want, whatever, the words can't hurt you. Right? If you're offended by a word, I, I, can't, I can't help you. It's the idea or the intention behind the word that you've got to worry about. Good example. In a group of friends, and my one friend called the other friend an Indian giver. He goes, man, you're such an Indian giver. And my other friend was like, whoa, dude, that is so racist. Native American giver. <laughs> like, yeah, because Indian is the racist part of that phrase. That's like being in a carload of friends and one friend goes, hey man, let's roll up our windows. We're about to go through the black neighborhood. Whoa, watch the racism. African American neighborhood. <laughs> now roll up your windows. Those fucking people are violent. <laughs> like I said, words don't really bother me. That's why I don't like the term like verbal abuse, right? You always hear that people go, oh, verbal abuse. I don't like it because it just conjures up like, like someone go, oh my God, Bob, what happened to your face? Has she been yelling at you again? What's going on? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't her. I went to a Lisa Lampanelli concert. I sat too close to the stage. It's, it was horrible. <laughs> Bob, I fell down the stairs. <laughs> and people take that shit way too crazy. Like I, was, I, I have three dogs, okay? And my dogs bark constantly. Sitting in my house one day, finally I had enough. I go running outside, I go, dogs, shut the fuck up or I'm going to punch you in your fucking heads. From over the fence, my neighbor goes, hey, that's a little bit harsh, don't you think? I'm like, well, no, I'm not actually going to, like, punch the dog in the head. I was just, he goes, oh, I know. But still, <laughs> that's a little abusive. <laughs> Verbally abusive to my dog. What do you, what do you think's going to happen? Am I going to come out in a couple weeks and my dog's going to be wearing a short skirt and too much eye makeup, smoking cigarettes, hanging out with Rottweilers? What exactly am I doing to my dog. And my dog has real problems. My dog has hip dysplasia. You know what that, that's like, I, call, I called a, my, the, the vet up and I'm like, okay, I, I got, my dog's got hip dysplasia. We did the x-ray, she goes, it's gonna be $6,000 per hip. Yes, for dog surgery. $12,000 for dog surgery. Now, I don't know about your religious beliefs, but when it comes to $12,000 dog surgery, I am a devout Christian scientist. <laughs> Maybe you'd be walking a lot better if you had a little bit more faith. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and who am I to question God's plans for my dog? Especially when God's plans involve 12 fucking thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, God can get a second job and pay for that shit himself, or God can think twice before he fucks up my dog's hips, okay? <laughs> my neighbor goes, well, you should take her to the Holistic Pet Center. They're really great over there. And I'm pretty open-minded. So I called them up and I'm like, hey, uh, Holistic Pet Center, what do you do? How do you fix a dog with hip dysplasia? And she goes, well, bring her in and we're gonna do a little massage on the area. And then we'll do some hot and cold stone therapy. And then, uh, and then we'll finish off the session with a little Reiki, a little energy movement. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. What if I had a cow with hip dysplasia? <laughs> she goes, sir, I don't understand. I'm like, no, if I had a cow with that exact same problem, how would you treat a cow? She goes, sir, I don't know what you're getting at. I'm just saying, well, it just seems a little unethical to feed a cow bullshit. Uh, <laughs> I'm not bashing all of alternative medicine, seriously. Like, if you can prove it to be safe and effective, and you can prove it scientifically, I'm all for it. Show, show me that it works. And show me that it works, and I'm all, I'm all about it. But most alternative medicine, they don't do that. You know what they do? They hide behind that dietary supplement label. That way they don't have to prove their, their effectiveness. If you guys remember, a while back, there was a, there was a company called uh, Airborne. They're the uh, over-the-counter cure for the common cold, okay? 
And uh, they got sued for like $23 million or something like that because they faked all of their clinical trials. I don't know how anybody was, was fooled by this anyway. You guys remember the commercial? Airborne, take it at the first sign of a cold, developed by a teacher who was tired of getting sick. <laughs> That's all it takes, 200 years of medical research and all we needed was one teacher who was mad as hell. <laughs> I'm not gonna take this anymore. How great would it be if we could solve all of our problems that way? Perpetual motion, finally invented by a hillbilly who would run out of gas. I'll tell you what, I was driving the goddamn El Camino down the goddamn fucking freeway, and that shit just took a shit on me right there in the middle of the freeway. And I'm like, I don't have a red cent to my name. I don't have a nickel. I don't have a goddamn thing. And I said, you know what you need to do, Cletus? You need to invent yourself. You need to invent yourself one of them zero-point energy machines. <laughs> Fuck this combustion bullshit. Airborne has a cartoon on the box. Would you trust medication with a cartoon on the box? <laughs> We went to pick up your lithium, and there was like Calvin and Hobbes, and Hobbes had his arm around Calvin. He's like, once you take this, you'll no longer be able to hear me. Would you buy it? <laughs> no. My friend goes, well, that's the problem, man. Big Pharma. They're out to keep all the cures down. My friend goes, there's a cure for cancer. They don't want you to know about it. <laughs> you guys ever think about how many people are involved in the cancer industry worldwide? Millions of people. Look at, you got oncologists. We have, uh, you know, researchers and scientists and assistants and, and, and professors and nonprofit organizations and colleges all around the world working tirelessly. Somebody comes up with a cure for cancer and one pharmaceutical company is paying them all off to keep quiet. <laughs> now, what would it take you to keep quiet about the cure for cancer? I've thought about it. I can't even put a number on it, right? Then I thought, okay, what about my greediest friends? What if I asked all my just greedy, just, just money-grubbing, just non-conscious, like my Republican friends, if I asked them, <laughs> like, how much to sh about cancer? They'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? It's cancer. Then I thought, okay, let's put a number on it, 10 million. 10 million times millions worldwide. I don't know, that's like something to the something power. All I know is this. You would have to pay them in euros because US dollars don't even go that high anymore, okay? <laughs> How much money are they making off this treatment, right? Think about that. If that were the case, I would go down and get a loan for a billion dollars. I know you're like, well, you can't get a loan for a billion dollars, but I could because I could show them the, the numbers, right? I would go down there and be like, look, hey, check it out. I'm gonna go buy the cure for cancer. I need a billion dollars. Uh, this is what they're making off this thing. They are making one gadrillion. <laughs> I know it sounds made up. Uh, <laughs> euros per year. I'm gonna have your billion back to you tomorrow, right? And then I would take that billion, and I'd find one of these greedy bastards that has the cure, I'd buy it from them, then I would make it public information. I would just release it to everybody. And then when the bank calls me up and they go, hey man, you got that billion you owe us? I'd be like, oh man, I don't have it anymore, sorry. But uh, remember those bailouts? <laughs> Let's call it even, right? <laughs> and fuck those guys too, that's what I say. Uh, But, uh, but there's no cure for cancer. We're gonna have to wait for one smoker to finally get angry enough to put an end to all of our suffering. <laughs> cancer finally cured by a smoker who was tired of getting cancer. <laughs> I'm no doctorologist, but I smoke enough to know that I hate these tumors. <laughs> Here's the thing. You know something's bullshit if they call it complementary medicine. That's how you can because here's the thing, you never need to compliment the shit that works. <laughs> if you want to lose weight, you don't need to compliment the diet and exercise. You need the diet and exercise. <laughs> but they call it compliment because that's what it does. It acts as a, it, like, it stands next to the shit that's working and by contrast, points out how great this other shit is. Like a compliment. It's like, hey, <gasps> Oh, you're insulin, right? You're insulin, oh my God, I can't believe it. You're, uh, you're like my favorite medic. At least seriously, what you do for diabetics is unbelievable. I can't, I can't believe I'm standing here next to insulin. This is incredible. Just, uh, I'm your biggest fan. Seriously, I love everything. It's just incredible. Oh, I can't believe I'm standing here next to insulin. Oh man, hey, if you ever need someone to poke people in random places for no apparent reason, <laughs> my name is acupuncture. I'm gonna be over here, okay? <laughs> it's gonna be great working with you.
It's also bullshit if, you, if they say it's all natural or from Europe. <laughs> if someone's got the all natural European formula guaranteed to make your cock huge. <laughs> Probably bullshit. That's where I hear that all the time. I hear that the male enhancement products, that's where I hear that, that the same, like, the, 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 the conspiracy theory, right? They're always like, uh, you know, like, like there's hero tabs and insight and extends, and they're always like, we've got the formula that'll make your penis bigger and thicker and fuller than any penis in history. We've got the formula the drug companies don't want you to know about. <laughs> Why do the drug companies care how big my dick is? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I could understand if the psychiatric industry was behind it because they have something to lose. <laughs> Fellow psychiatrists, we've got to do something about this dick growing formula. <laughs> Ever since men's penises are larger, we've lost about 75% of our clients. <laughs> Depression in men is virtually cured. <sighs> and now women are beginning to cheer up as well. We need to get these dicks back down to a depressing size. Johnson, you've got a small penis. Give us the answer. I would believe the conspiracy theory if I heard something like, uh, hero tabs. We've got the formula the sports car industry doesn't want you to know about. <laughs> People believe weird shit, though, like astrology. The day you were born, the moon was over here in this cluster of stars, which isn't really a cluster of stars because that one's a planet and, and that one's a galaxy and that one's been dead for a million years. And, and they're not even a cluster because they're billions of light years apart. But from our narrow perspective, hey, that looks like a crab. So <laughs> since the moon's over by the crab, I'm going to have a set of traits for the rest of my life. And they live their entire lives like this. You ever met one of these people? They're like, oh, hi, what month were you born? You're like, uh, July. They're like, July. <laughs> you and I will not get along. Because <laughs> you, my friend, are a cancer. The most emotional of all the signs. And I am a Virgo. And as a Virgo, I'm very logical and very rational. Apparently not, because you fucking believe in astrology, okay? <laughs> Let me get this straight. You, you erode our collective critical thinking skills from within by spreading myth and misinformation throughout our society as if it's fact. Maybe it's time we reevaluate which one of us is the cancer. <laughs> and I agree, that is a great joke. Uh, I, uh, a lot of stuff I don't believe in. Paranormal stuff? I don't believe in the paranormal, even though there's, what, 40 shows on TV telling me there's paranormal shit? My wife lo loves those shows. She watches all those shows because she thinks they're hilarious. And they are for a, a short period of time, but I just get so frustrated with them because they like to pretend that they're reality. And they're not reality shows, right? You know how you know they're not reality? Because they, they have a cast. Every show, whether it's Bigfoot or Psychics or Ghosts, has the same four people. They always have the true believer, the true believer is the one that no matter what you give her, she just believes it. You throw it at her and she believes it, right? And I say her because it's always like a crazy British woman, right? It's always that one. Uh, then you have the, um, the expert. The expert's the guy who, despite having no physical information or, or any sort of you know, data on, on what it is they're looking for, he seems to know everything about them. He knows like what they're thinking at any given moment or what they had for dinner last night or who their bestie is, right? Like he's the guy like, like on the ghost shows that would be like the medium, the little overweight guy with the mustache who can talk to the spirits. He kind of sounds like a southern theater director, right? He's always like... <laughs> There's evil spirits in this place. He needs this bitch out. <laughs> then you have the techie. The techie's my favorite because he's the guy responsible for all the scientific paraphernalia, right? He's not a scientist himself. He's more of like a scientographer, right? He's, uh, he's the guy responsible for all their cool equipment like the uh, heatometer and the plasmograph and the shit that doesn't exist a phone, right? He's that guy. <laughs> 
He's the guy who can tell you if there's a hot spot or a cold spot. You're like, what's a hot spot? Hot spot is, of course, a uh, ghost. Friendly ghost, something like your Casper variety. And uh, what's a cold spot? Cold spot, of course, indicates a ghost. Uh, more of an evil ghost, though. Something you might find on a Ghostbusters, like a, you know, a gatekeeper or a key master or a Zool, a Slimer, or something like that. What does a warm spot indicate? Warm spots generally indicate proper insulation, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I love the hot spot, cold spot, circular reasoning. Right? How would you determine that the, the hot spot and the cold spot were the ghost? Well, that's a funny question. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, see, every time we kept coming into these here houses, we kept finding ourselves some cold spots. You're like, wow, okay, interesting. And how did you determine that the, the uh, cold spot was a ghost? Well, because these houses are haunted <laughs> by ghosts. And how do you know that the houses are haunted by ghosts? Because we keep finding cold spots. Are you fucking stupid or something? How do you not follow this logic? And they always have a skeptic on there, but the skeptic's not a skeptic like you and I would know a skeptic, right? The, the resident skeptic, the one that's part of the cast, he's just on there, and they call him a skeptic, so it looks like they're doing some form of honest investigation, which they're not, right? But, but to his credit... The skeptic always has the most education. Like, he's always got, like, five or six years of junior college, right? Like, he is really, <laughs> really educated. And you know he's a skeptic because he loves to tell you he's a skeptic. He's like, yeah, I tell you, I'm a skeptic, all right? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that's how I'm born and raised, man. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, uh, you know, you're going to try to prove something to me. You better show me some hard factual data. You want to show me there's ghosts? I better see some hard factual data there's ghosts. You want to prove to me there's a Bigfoot? I better see some scientific data that there is a Bigfoot. Otherwise, I'm not buying it, man. I'm a skeptic. I'm hardwired that way. I can't even, you know, I can't change it. That's just how I am, man. That being said, about uh, five minutes ago, I heard a rustling over there in them bushes. <laughs> and based on this new information... I'd say there's at least four to five large Sasquatches currently planning our demise. <laughs> Scientifically speaking. The, the Bigfoot shows are the best, honestly, because the whole idea of Bigfoot is absolutely hilarious. Okay, so what it would take to sustain a population of giant mammals, okay, in an area of like, where, like Washington. There's always like a ton of sight sightings in Washington. Okay, think about it. You would need like, like hundreds, perhaps thousands of individuals in the gene pool at any given time. Then you extrapolate that over like hundreds of thousands of years. What is that, like millions of individual big feet that would have lived and died. And yet we have not found one bone. We have not found one tooth. We have not found a, a evidence of their habitat, their food trail, nothing. What have we found? Some large footprints and an 80, uh, like a 40 year old eight millimeter footage of a guy in an orangutan suit walking behind a grove of trees, right? <laughs> Now compare that to the Amazon, a much larger, much denser area where we found a group of people formerly called the invisible people, okay? Not only did we find them, we introduced them to cigarettes and Lady Gaga music, okay? We found the shit out of those invisible people. Compare that to forensic files. I'm watching forensic files. They found a serial rapist murderer because they had, a, a, one of the victims had a red carpet fiber, a single red carpet fiber. They matched that red carpet fiber back to the only red carpets that, that any car ever had. It was like a, a you know, it was 1976 Ford rape mobile or something like that, right? And then <laughs> they found the guy in the area that had that car, arrested him, DNA match, he's in prison. Yet we can't find any physical evidence on a seven foot tall hairy primate living outside of Seattle. Really? They haven't come into Starbucks for a latte, nothing? <laughs> Go to those towns too, and there's all kinds of. Go to there's there's like towns that are their entire economy is based around Bigfoot. Their towns are named after Bigfoot. There's like Bigfoot Town and 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 Bigfoot Village and Bigfoot Villa and Bigfoot Topia. And they have like a Bigfoot hotel and a and a Bigfoot museum. How the 
fuck can you have a museum if you don't have anything to put in the museum? Right? Welcome to my unicorn museum. Uh, you can see here, this is a beautiful drawing that my daughter done did of a unicorn. Check out the likeness. <laughs> this here is a purple blown glass statue of a unicorn. I got down at the 84 County Fair, isn't that pretty? Uh, over here, this is a photograph of my horse, Teddy, with a carrot stable to his forehead, kind of like a, a unicorn reenactment. Uh, this is the prized possession of the Unicorn Museum. This is a, the official movie poster of the 80s film Legend, starring Tom Cruise and Mia Sara. Autographed by Tim Curry. <laughs> Go to those towns. Seriously, you pull up to one of these towns, and, and, and like a guy will greet you, like one of those experts will greet you, and you're like, how you doing? Welcome to Bigfootopia. My name is Geraldine Tucker. No, not Geraldine. That's a woman's name, of course. My name is Gerald Dean Tucker. I'm named after my mama, Geraldine Tucker. Now, uh, I hear you're up here hunting for big feats, huh? You got to know the fact from the fiction if you're hunting for big feet. You got to know the myth from the reality. First thing you need to know, do not leave your shoes out at night. Because they got a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> and they will come down off that mountain and they'll try them some bitches on. They'll stretch them. I tell you, they, they will fuck up a flip-flop. So don't even do it. Uh, <laughs> The other thing you need to know is, uh, 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 you know, you, you got to know that they are not man-eaters. They're not going to hurt you. Mostly vegans. Uh, they have fire capabilities. They understand about fire. They do not understand about contraception. Hmm. Maybe they don't believe in it like the Catholics. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, they ain't using it. And uh, what else you need to know about, uh, about them? All right, oh, you got to listen late at night if you're going to be hunting for them. Listen late at night, and you're going to hear their mating calls. You'll hear this at night. You'll hear... Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I know you're probably saying to yourself, man, that sounds a lot like a hoot owl. Yeah, it does. It does to the untrained ear. <laughs> to a professional squatchologist like myself, I know that is a male Bigfoot looking for a ladyfoot. Because you got to understand up here in the great Northwest, man, it is 10 to 1 men to women. Right? If you're a man looking for a woman, it's 10 to 1. And I'm talking about Bigfoot, not myself here. I'm just talking about, like, a lot of them are insecure. They are. They are. You know, they got their problems. Like, you know, a lot of them maybe have a bald spot or, uh, you know, some chronic halitosis or, you know, maybe a little paunch going on here. And they can be very insecure, very insecure about the size of their, uh, you know, their feet and whatnot. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's hard, man. It is hard if you're a male squatch up here just trying to pass along your namesake. That's the biggest thing if you're male Sasquatch. You just want to pass along your namesake, find a nice lady foot to settle down with, and pass along your name. And they'll tell you that the female Sasquatch is monogamous, but that ain't true. You get another male Squatch from the big city coming here with his fancy truck and his chain of red box DVD vending machines. Oh, they'll leave you. They'll leave you all alone, crying your eyes out in a unicorn museum. <laughs> Lonely. Perhaps you've had one too many mojitos. I don't know. I thought about, though, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if that's what, that's what we should do with, like, the, uh, the illegal aliens, right? They want to be here, and we don't want them here. But we want the benefits of having them here, like clean houses and like uh, you know low produce prices. So why don't we take all the illegals, put them in the forest of Washington to live among the Sasquatch? We'll never see them again. <laughs> Every now and then we might find some evidence of them. We might find like a '87 Chevy Astro van <laughs> parked on the outskirts of the national forest or. Every now and then someone will uncover like some grainy eight millimeter footage of Diego walking behind a grove of trees with a leaf blower, right? That would be like. <laughs> and what's the worst thing that could happen? Somebody could catch one. And they'd be so far north, we'd just think they're Canadian and we wouldn't give a shit. We'd <laughs> give them a job writing for 30 Rock. It'd be fucking perfect. Uh, <laughs> the ghost shows are weird too, man. Like for me, the ghost shows, like. I didn't even know that people outside of the ghost shows believed in ghosts. And I'm not kidding you. Like, I didn't realize that people actually believed in ghosts. Till after a show, one of my friends goes, you don't believe in ghosts? 
And I'm like, N I'm older than four. Are you fucking kidding me? No. I don't even know what a ghost is supposed to be. What is it? They say the soul. Okay, that's a whole other issue we got to deal with. But let's just say the very least, what I've gathered is this. That the body dies, and then the energy of the body remains in human form and wanders around the earth, repeating old patterns until it gets to move on and cross over. Yet every time I hear about these ghosts and I watch these shows, the ghosts are always wearing clothes. Are we supposed to believe that this is the soul of the suit and tie or the, the, the dress that is like stuck on the celestial sails rack until it becomes retro cool again and gets to go to the big Nordstrom in the sky? What is it? Shouldn't all ghosts be naked? Wander around the afterlife like some sort of paranormal hedonism, right? Just looking for other swing inspectors to go to the tent and get metaphysical with, right? I'm watching one of these shows and, and, and the, uh, the, the guy's like, yeah, we had a ghost, all right. Back in 1875, man shot himself right over there, 9 o'clock at night, killed himself. Now every night at 9 o'clock, that computer turns itself on. <laughs> what does a ghost from 1875 want with a computer? What does any ghost really want with a computer? Logging onto eBay to find their lost armoire? What exactly? <laughs> Going onto soulmates.com to find that perfect partner for their poltergeist personality, right? <laughs> what exactly? Now, if at, okay, if at 859, I saw a box of tissue paper go floating by, and then a <laughs> bottle of Lubriderm. <laughs> and the computer turns on, and up pops like barelydead.net or <laughs> amateurapparitionauditions.com. OK, we have a ghost repeating an old pattern. <laughs> I'll break out the magnetrometron and grab a reading. <laughs> I don't want to get graphic, though, but if ghosts masturbate, what do you think happens to the ghost, you know, Jism, whatever. You think it floats right through the tissue paper? I mean, I know mine does sometimes, and I'm of this world, so I think it's a valid question. But would that scare you? If you came home and there's a ghost in there, he'd be like, dude, come on, really? <laughs> Clean up when you're done. There's ectoplasm all over the keyboard. Uh, and by the way, this whole business, you're never going to cross over that way, OK? Think about ghosts. Are ghosts ever scary? Any ghost story, have you ever heard, has it ever been scary? Here's every ghost story I ever hear. Every ghost story is like this. Well, every night when I go to sleep, I put my book right here on this nightstand. And every morning when I wake up, my book is over there on that table. It's like, dude, you got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, you got a ghost with OCD, right? <laughs> I hear this story a lot, too. I woke up in the middle of the night, and my grandpa was just sitting on the end of the bed staring at me. You're like, wow, your grandpa, that's cool. Did you talk to him? Talk to him! I was scared to death. <laughs> you were scared to death of your peepaw. Really? Like, wh <laughs> why? Did he try to kill you? Uh-uh. Did he try to, like, hurt you? Nope. Did he try to, like, 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 rape you or something? Like, what did he do? Nothing. Well, dude, there's your problem. Your grandpa comes all this way through the wormhole across time, through space, just to bring you some hard candy and some butter mints and maybe regale you with stories about WWII, and you don't even rap to the guy? No wonder he moves your book from place to place. You're a fucking asshole, okay? <laughs> now, if I woke up in the middle of the night and Uncle Ted was sitting on the end of the bed, I'd be scared. That guy tried to possess me when he was alive, okay? <laughs> so. Uh, ghosts aren't scary. And, and the other thing about ghosts is, is, is you never hear about a cool ghost, right? When was the last time you heard about like a 24-year-old nymphomaniac stripper ghost <laughs> who comes in late at night when you're sleeping, restrains you, and just grinds on you like you're a bedpost in a convent, right? <laughs> just rides you all night long like she's a fat Mexican kid and you're a street carnival tilt-a-whirl, right? I mean... <laughs> Here's the thing, if ghosts existed, then every spectrum of people that's ever lived and died would be represented in the afterlife, and that ghost would exist, right? And then I thought, well, maybe you just don't hear about that ghost, right? I mean, think about it, because maybe nobody fucking reports that ghost, right? <laughs> I know I wouldn't. In fact, if I was moving into a new house, and they said, Mr. Harris, before you sign these papers, I need to warn you, this house is haunted. 
by a 24-year-old nymphomaniac stripper ghost. They're like, would you like me to sign that in ink or blood? Exactly, where, where do you want that? That's a house I move into. That's a ghost I taunt. I'm walking around that house all night long like this. I ain't leaving, bitch. It's my house. I like my book over here. What are you going to do about it? Haunt me. Please. Let's get naked and repeat some old patterns. Come on, can we? Man, I, uh, I try not to watch TV because it just, it just depresses me because everything, the reality, it's just all garbage. So I try to read, and I find that I can't even read anymore and get, and get good information. I went to the bookstore. There's like 40 new books every week by self-proclaimed spiritual gurus, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like these self-help spiritual gurus? Everyone looks the same. Like the guy's always got his, his picture of himself on the cover, and he always kind of looks like Osama bin Laden with a hangover, right? And it's like... And he always claims to get his information directly from God. You're like, oh, let's take a look at this. Uh, here's an uneducated guy who two weeks ago lived in a cave, smells like cigarettes and Turkish coffee. Your advice better be from God. Otherwise, I'm not fucking listening, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I don't get career advice from anyone who looks like he's held down more teenage boys than jobs, okay? <laughs> They get their God, the information from God. Have you ever read these books? What's God like in it? Every book says the same two things. Be nice to each other and think positively. And you can sum those two things up into don't be a douche. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you need to talk to the creator of all things to come up with don't be a douche, you're a douche, okay? <laughs> The rest of us figured that out in first grade. We didn't need like a divine intervention, okay? I wonder where like all these books of talking to God and no one's ever asked a legitimate question. God has never voluntarily just given up some shit that we don't know. How do these conversations go? It's like, you, in the pajamas, put down the Justin Bieber pictures and pick up a pen. I'm God, gonna give you some information. Yeah, you. Whatever you'd like to know, you can ask me. Any question you'd like to know, anything you've ever thought of, all of life's mysteries uncovered right now, anything you want to know, anything I want to know, you can ask me whatever you'd like to know, anything, anything. Wow, anything I want to know. Wow, okay, um, okay, God, all right, anything I'd like to know, all right. Should we? Be nice to each other? <laughs> That's funny. You had, oh, you're serious. Um, yes, look, be nice to each other. Yes, of course. Uh, when I say you can ask me any question, don't soft pitch them to me. I'm God. I can handle them. Any question you'd like, anything you want answered, anything, anything. Okay. All right, God, hard questions. Um, all right, okay. Should we think positively? <laughs> Jesus Christ, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yes, think positively. Are you fucking stupid? What, are you serious? Hey, let me give you some advice. Let me throw some out. How about, you want to hear about the Goldbach conjecture? Uh, ooh, how about string theory? Can I give you my take on string theory? No, ooh, Higgs boson. Can I tell you about the God particle? Come on, let me tell you about the me particle. That sounds great, God. Great. <laughs> later. But right now, I just really want to hear about the power of love. <laughs> the, the, po the, power, the power of love, really. All right, fine. The, the po power of love, power of love, power of love. Uh, with love, all things are possible. No, I wanted to hear about that Huey Lewis song. Uh, you know, the power. Uh, how the fuck did that get on the charts? Uh, that's like, ooh, that is a good question. Uh, you're going to have to ask the devil about that. I don't deal in those types of contracts. I do, I do, I do a lot of reading, though. Like I said, I'm at the bookstore a lot, and I read a lot of nonfiction books. I almost never read fiction. Favorite subject is religion. So I guess you could say I read nonfiction books about fictional books, so uh, 
I was at the bookstore the other day. They have a book in there called Christianity for Dummies. And I was like, oh, the irony. Uh, <laughs> I got a friend who's a big Christian, and he always comes to my house, and he'll like look through my bookshelf, and he comes across that I have Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion. He goes, Richard Dawkins? That guy's an idiot. That guy's a moron. Like, no, that guy's an evolutionary biologist. He's a, like a professor, a, an author. He's a, you know, hardly a moron. You may not agree with him, but he's not an idiot. Because he's got nothing to say, man. He's got no new arguments. Like, really? I think he makes a hundred good points in his book. I'd love to hear you refute one of them. Just one. Pick the easiest one. Pick the one that when you read through it, you said to yourself, this is garbage. I'm going to smash this. Give me your rebuttal. Go. My friend goes, well, I haven't read the book. <laughs> like, go figure. A Christian who's got fervent beliefs about a book he's never actually read. <laughs> Who to thunk? I have read the Bible. Doesn't convince me. You know what really doesn't convince me? The miracles. Not convinced by the miracles in the Bible. Let's take a basic one. Jesus turned water into wine. Okay, let's look at it. He took the one thing that we all need to live, the lifeblood of the earth, if you will, then took a group of people in the desert and turned theirs into alcohol. Good move. What's next? Celery into cigarettes? What is this fucking party, Jesus? <laughs> the fuck? Jerusalem or a dorm room in San Diego State? What exactly is going on here? It's like, dude, you got to come to Jesus' dorm this weekend, dude. It's going to be off the fucking chain. <laughs> Top secret party, dude. Jesus won't even tell me what it's about, man. He just said, bring some wheat bread and a bong, and we're going to party like it's ought nine. Whatever the fuck that means, right? Bring some chicks, dude. I don't even care. Just bring those fugly ones, man. You know, it's Jesus. He can turn fatter into fine. Like nothing, dude. <laughs> what about the modern miracles? You guys convinced by those? Our Lady of Guadalupe. Guy had a serape full of flowers, and he opened it up, and there was the vague imprint of the Virgin Mary. That's a miracle. Another guy had a grilled cheese sandwich, and the, the burnt areas resembled Jesus, and that's a miracle. <laughs> Not about you guys, but you want to convince me you need far more compelling evidence than a grilled Jesus, okay? <laughs> Seriously. There's a statue of the Virgin Mary down in Central America that cries tears, and the Catholic Church called that a miracle. Yeah. My daughter has a doll that cries tears. It also pisses on itself. It shits on itself. I don't have 10,000 El Salvadorians hanging out at my doorstep trying to cop a peek. Oh my God, it's a miracle. No, it's baby alive. They're fucking $9.99 at Target. That's the miracle. You know how I know, I, I know Christians don't read the Bible? It's because they insist on putting up the Ten Commandments everywhere. You can't possibly have read the Ten Commandments and think that they have any sort of validity in modern society. Especially like as a moral code. Are you shitting me? The first four are what? They're not even, not even about anything. It's just like God's insecurity. It's like, you know, uh, don't believe in other gods. Don't have any gods before me. Don't, don't, don't take my name in vain. Don't, don't worship false idols. Don't listen to Billy Idol. I don't know. It's like me, 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 blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this is the all-powerful creator of the universe? It sounds like a jealous 16-year-old girlfriend to me. <laughs> right? It's like, um, excuse me. Were you just staring at that other god? O-M-M. -M. <laughs> oh, my me. You were totally checking out her proverbs. Wantonly, I might add. Wantonly. Is that what you like? Is that the kind of bitch you like? Like that with the you, gods with, like, four arms or whatever? Ugh. She's so skanky. How can you like that? I've heard she's had, like, all six of the seven plagues. I can't believe you're staring at... Are you looking at my man? You better not be, be coveting my manservant, bitch, okay? You better not be coveting his ass. Otherwise, fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone. <laughs> I can't believe you! <gasps> oh, God, girlfriend, what are you doing? God, girlfriend. <laughs> I'm holding my breath until you tell me you love me. <gasps> Again? You do this every thousand years. Uh. <laughs> but here's the thing. They don't read their own books, yet they insist on arguing with you about shit that you know they've never fucking read. Evolution, they always want to argue with you about evolution. And immediately, as soon as you start talking to them, you realize they know nothing about the subject. 
great example. There's a, there's a, a video on YouTube. Uh, in fact, it's the funniest thing you're ever going to see. So you have permission to leave now, go home and watch it. Uh, way funnier than anything I can do. But, but it, it's Kurt Cameron. You guys remember the, the childhood star, right? And he's got his, like, preacher guy, Ray Comfort, there. And they do this video. Most of you have probably seen it. But if not, seriously, go watch it. Uh, they're trying to argue against evolution and for intelligent design. And, uh, and their evidence is that the banana is perfectly designed for human consumption. It's uh, got a ripeness indicator in it. If it's uh, too green, no good. If it's too brown, too ripe. If it's just yellow, just perfect. It's got three ridges on the far side that fit perfectly with the three grooves in your hand. It's got an easy pop-top opening, much like a soda can. And it curves right to, right to your mouth for easy access. <laughs> this part is creepy enough. Uh, but I'm like, wait, 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 wait a second. You are trying to argue that man and other apes didn't share a common ancestor, and your evidence <laughs> is a fucking banana. <laughs> yeah, because if there's one thing we know apes hate, it's bananas. I think it's because they have such a hard time holding them there with their hooves. You know what I mean? They're just like. <laughs> Then they break out, there's another video where, where they're arguing with somebody and the guy's like, well, if there's evolution's true, then where are all the transitional species? I've never seen a cat turn into a dog before. It's like, well, that's not how evolution works. No one ever said a cat turns into a dog. It's tiny little changes over long periods of time. So basically, every species that's ever existed is kind of like a transitional species, right? And they're like, well, have you ever seen this? And then they break out a picture, a composited picture of a duck's body with a crocodile's head on it. <laughs> Have you ever seen a crocoduck? Like we're all supposed to go, ah, oh, damn it, you got us. <laughs> never seen a crocoduck. Damn, what am I gonna do? It's like, yeah, you know, you're right. I've never seen a crocoduck. But I am staring at my two favorite transitional species, croc -a shit and dumb fuck. Uh, <laughs> that's close, right? <laughs> and they go this one, well, evolution's just a theory. It's just a theory. Just a theory. A theory is like one of the highest levels of knowledge you can achieve in science. Okay? Let's look at some other things that are just theories. Uh, uh, relativity, just a theory. Gravity, just a theory. Plate tectonics, just a theory. Germ theory, just a theory. <laughs> so if you ever use the phrase just a theory, I'd say you either don't know the meaning of the word theory or you don't know the meaning of the word just. <laughs> You probably say shit like, ah, oh, yeah, don't worry about that thing swimming down there. It can't hurt you. That's just a great white shark. Uh, that guy, he's got no power. Just the president of the United States. Condom? Pfft. It's just AIDS. Uh, yeah, they always say, they go, well, uh, you can't prove it 100%. You're like, you're right. So then you don't know. You don't know, do you? And you got to go, okay, fine, I don't know. Oh, well, when it comes to Jesus... I know. <laughs> and then you get into this one. No, you believe. And that's cool. No, I know. No, you believe. No, I know. No, you believe. No, I know. Look, this word no, I do not think it means what you think it means, okay? <laughs> it's a very complex concept. Um, how do I explain this to you? Okay, I can't say that I know you're an idiot. <laughs> that is just a theory. I don't want to just like bash on Christianity because it's all religion that I don't get. But I just, it's, Christianity is what I'm confronted with. It's what I know. I'm trying to read up more. Been reading up on Islam a little bit. Don't know a lot about it. Uh, I know what people tell me, which I don't know if it's true or not. But people say that if a Muslim man dies for his cause in the afterlife, he gets 70 virgins. And that sounds awesome to me. Uh, <laughs> although they don't really say what kind of virgins, right? We don't know that it's 70 hot 19-year-old chicks. For all we know, it could be 70 socially awkward 40-year-old dudes, right? <laughs> like, hi, buddy. How you doing? My name's John. Uh, it's my partner, Phil. We're going to be your first two virgins today. Uh, <laughs> you want to play World of Warcraft? 
How pissed would you be if you showed up to the afterlife and you're like, whoa, 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 hold on a second, wait, 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 I just strapped a bomb to my chest. I walked into a kosher McDonald's in downtown Jerusalem. I killed over a hundred people, liberal Jews, NYU grad students, and a handful of Beverly Hills orthodontists on a pilgrimage. <laughs> and this is my reward? 69 fat guys and a baby? This is bullshit. <laughs> I, uh, my, my friend always goes to me, he goes, man, because you're such, you're such a cynic, dude. Because what do you believe in, man? You got to believe in something. I'm going to find something that you can believe in. Ah, here's something you can't deny. You're going to deny this? Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> can't deny that, huh? Everything happens for a reason. I'm like, I can't deny that? I think I can. Right? I don't believe everything happens for a reason. I understand cause and effect. Sure, if I don't put my foot on my brake, I might slam into the car in front of me. But is that what they mean by that? No. They always mean some grandiose cosmic cause and effect, like somebody's looking out for me, everything happens for a reason. How many times have you heard stories like this, where the guy's like, uh, oh man, crazy shit happened to me the other day, man, I, uh, totally late for work, right, but, but it was weird because I, my alarm went off and it, uh, late and it never goes off late and I couldn't find my shoes and I'm scrambling to get out of my house, finally get out to my house, to my car, and, and, and I don't have my keys. And I'm like, oh, so I gotta break into my house to find my keys, finally find my keys, get into my car on the freeway, 50 car pile up, 20 people dead. And then I thought about it. If I had had my keys, I'd have been in the middle of that. And I'd be dead. Somebody was looking out for me. Everything happens for a reason. Like, yeah, because if I'm God and I don't want you to die in a horrific car accident because the world needs a solid Denny's waiter or whatever the fuck it is you do. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide your keys to delay you for two and a half minutes because as an all-loving, omnipotent being, that makes far more sense than say, oh, I don't know. How about I just don't cause a 50-car pileup and murder 20 people on the freeway? That's crazy. Why would I do some shit like that? And what about those 20 people? You ever think about them? Maybe 20 people died on the freeway because you left your keys at home, you dick. Yeah? You ever think about that? Mr. Everything Happens for a Reason? I'd love it if everything happened for a reason. I would. It would be great. What if everything happened for the same reason? <laughs> Ten seconds left of the game. Palmer drops back, fires a strike across the middle. It's caught. He breaks the tackle. 20, 10, touchdown. Raiders win the Super Bowl. Raiders win. This is unbelievable. How do you feel at this moment? Oh, my God. This is incredible. The Super Bowl is a lifelong dream. Before I go any further, though, I have to. I got to thank Ian. If he had left his keys at home that day, none of this would have been possible. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk to the losing Seattle Seahawks. It was a tough game. How do you feel? Oh, it was a horrible game. Uh, I guess, guess we weren't meant to win. It just wasn't in the cards for us. I mean, sure, it would have been nice if he had, hadn't left his keys at home that day. Uh, <laughs> we'd be over there in that winner's circle right now. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board. We're going to come back stronger next year. We're going to learn from this experience, because you know what they say, everything happens for the reason. <laughs> I, uh, I'm thinking about that, everything happens for a reason. When I'm watching this TV show, I'm watching a documentary show about, about rare birth defects and birth disorders, okay? And they had these two girls on there that were stuck together at the head, two uh, sisters, um, Right? I guess, obviously, they're not fucking neighbors. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, let me explain. One is like, is like, like full size, right? Like it's a conjoined twin, full size, totally normal. Aside from, you know, having a sister on her head, she's totally normal. Uh, the other one is half size, right? And they keep her on a tray attached to a chair, and she is a country singer. And I'm thinking to myself, how bad would that suck to be attached to a country singer? <laughs> Could you imagine? Singing all day long. At some point you're in the studio, you're like, can you please stop already? The song is stuck in our head. <laughs> Whenever they do a cover of You Were Always On My Mind, that would be fucking great, wouldn't it?
People are always like, oh, it's like, dude, they're, they're 40 years old. Sister on their head for 40 years. There's nothing I can say that they haven't heard. There's no look I can give them that they haven't seen. 40 years with a sister on your head. That didn't happen at 39. They weren't walking down the street like some Reese's peanut butter cup commercial. Like, hey, you got your sister and my sister. No, they were born that way. And you can't pop that. You can't remove. It's a sister. <laughs> Granted, it's a half sister, but it's still a sister. It's a half sister never removed. That's the legal terminology. <laughs> so they were talking to the big one because the, the big one was going out on a date. All right, you got me. Technically, they're both going out on a date, but. <laughs> They, I don't want to hear about their dating life from them. I want to hear about the dating life from the guy they're dating. <laughs> How'd the date go? It was fucking awesome. I picked her up, and we had some dinner, and then a movie, and then went and got a couple of drinks, and then went back to her house. Got heads? <laughs> Have you had heads? Holy shit, go get heads. Then they asked the little one the question that I thought was so cool. They're like, oh, it's so amazing. You're this big. You live on a tray. You're a conjoined twin, and you're a country singer. You stuck it out. You persevered. What kept you going through the hardships? She goes, well, it was something that my mama told me when I was a little girl. She goes, honey, you can be whatever you want when you grow up. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. But no, you can't. You can't be a loner. I mean, that's just a, that's a math problem right there. You can't be like a motorcycle racer. Not unless you have like a really high sidecar and a fucked up looking helmet. You do have limitations. You can't be like an MMA fighter. You couldn't be in the UFC, right? Or you try getting out of a rear naked choke with a bitch on your head. That's hard. The corner would be like, shrimp, get out of there. You'd be like, no, not without surgery. And they'd be like, just pull his hand off your chins, right? And it would be... Difficult. I'm watching the show, and they got these, uh, the, these conjoined twins, two guys on there. And they were very religious. And I found that totally strange, right? Two conjoined twins that were religious. They kept saying this. They kept saying, we are so blessed. We love God. And I'm like, really? Because if there's a God, he fucking hates you. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but you're supposed to be two people. Yeah. <laughs> then I thought about, what do you think is going on? If you're somebody like who God does not know how to or refuses to heal, like a conjoined twin or an amputee, what do you think's going on when you're praying to God every night? Please, God, heal me. Do you think God's up there going, no, dude, I made you that way. I like you that way, so suck it. What do you think God's doing? <laughs> Or maybe you think God's up there going, I don't know what happened there. Uh, that is not how I intended. Uh, let's, abracadabra. Nothing. I don't know. Put a little butter on it. Stop fucking calling me. Prank caller. Prank caller. But then I thought about it. Maybe, maybe the two twins are split on the decision. No pun intended. Come on. But, you know, maybe they don't see eye to eye. That's all I'm saying, right? <laughs> no, like, seriously, like, what if one wants to be separated and the other one wants to remain together? So every night it's like, hey, God, it's Mike here with Marshall. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I, uh, I know I pray every night for 40 years to uh, separate us, but uh, ah, if you could just, you know, tomorrow just make us, you know, our own person. Yeah, that would just... That would just mean the world to me. I would spend the rest of my days going door to door, annoying people with the story of my life or whatever it is that you feel serves you best, if you could just make that happen. Amen. Hey, God. It's Marshall. <laughs> Don't listen to this asshole. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> this is a great gig. Like, we get, like, two for one on everything. Uh, We've been on, like, what, 10 TV shows? I don't know. Chicks love it. I don't know. It's some kind of weird, freaky, kinky fetish thing. But, uh, hey, the kinkier, the better. You know what I mean? If you can keep them coming, I'll keep them coming. So, uh, <laughs> hey, if you can, uh, you know, see to it in the morning, I'm still with this knucklehead. Bravo. Amen. <laughs> At some point, if you're Mike, 
don't you just start to develop middle child syndrome? You're like, hey, God, it's Mike again. Seriously, man, what gives? Huh? I mean, I'm serious. You know, I know you're busy. I know you're up there, you know, helping sports teams win championships and, you know, grilling the picture of your son and cheese sandwiches all across the globe. Important things. I get it. I'm no dummy. I've read the book. Of course, you know, being a Virgo, I'm very logical, but... Uh, now, I get that everything happens for the reason, but I don't understand that. I don't give a shit who left his keys at home. This is fucked up. <laughs> Every night I pray to you, God, please separate us. And every night Marshall goes, God, please keep us together. It's like you don't even hear Mike. It's like you don't even care about Mike. You don't even love Mike. It's like all you care about is Marshall. It's always Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. <laughs> oh. oh man, you people, you guys are cool. Uh, thank you so much for coming out, by the way. Uh, I, hope, I hope the end of the world was good to you. Uh, so I want to share, I want to share this because it's a, a true story and, and, and then I'm going to go. Um, so this is a story that, that I, was, I was, while I was writing this whole act like a year ago, driving around in the car with my daughter who at the time was six years old, okay? And I'm uh, talking to my friend on the phone and I'm telling him like, yeah, I really want to do this bit about original sin. And, my, and I hang up the phone and my daughter goes, daddy, what's original sin? And I'm like, wow, you know, she's never... She's never experienced this. She doesn't know what I'm talking about. And I said, well, you know, honey, it would be hard to explain to you because you don't know any of the characters in the Bible. Like, if I try to explain to you, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. Let me give you an, an analogy. And I, I said, okay, so imagine dad is God. I know. It's pretty easy to do, actually. Uh, I go, and, and you know how, how dad tells you don't, not to put your fingers in your food? She goes, yeah. I go, all right, well, let's say that I said, do not put your fingers in your food again. And if you do, I'm going to have to punish you and everybody else for all eternity. And then a couple weeks go by, and you put your fingers in your food, and I go, I, I warned you. And then I just start walking around the world and just start punching people in their face, right? And I'm punching people in their face like, oh, my God, why are you doing that? I'm like, she put her fingers in her food. It's called justice. Bam, and I'm punching people in the face. I'm like, stop it. I'm like, no, she should have put her fingers in her food. It's your problem. Bam, and I'm punching people in the face. And I'm just punching people in the face. And after a couple of million years or a few thousand, depending on whose book you read, I... Uh, <laughs> I say to myself, you know what, I might be being a tad bit irrational. So uh, I decide to have another kid, this time a son, and I decide to punch him in the face <laughs> to tell other people, look, I'm punching this baby in the face <laughs> so that I don't have to punch you in the face because she put her fingers in her food. And my daughter starts laughing her ass off. She's like, Dad, stop it. Quit being silly. I want to know the real story. Tell me what really happened. And I said, fine, fine. Okay, what really happened? All right, God creates two people, Adam and Eve. And he says, do not eat this fruit from this tree. It's a forbidden tree of knowledge. We cannot have you thinking. So do not <laughs> eat that fruit from the tree of knowledge. Or I'm going to punish you and everybody for all eternity by throwing him to hell and burn forever. A little while goes by, and a talking snake comes up, and he says, uh, don't worry about that guy. Go ahead and eat the fruit. So Eve eats the fruit, and God goes, I told you. I warned you, and now you're all going to burn in hell. And everybody from, from, from here on out, burn in hell. He just starts sending people to hell. He's sending people to hell left and right. He's sending this guy to hell. Everybody who's born, said it. Why? Well, because she ate some fruit. It's not my fault. It's called justice. And then after about a couple of million years, or a few thousand, depending on whose book you read, um, God says to himself, I might be being a tad bit irrational. I'm going to have another son and murder him. <laughs> so that you don't have to go to hell because this chick ate some fruit. And my daughter gets really angry at me. She goes, Daddy, stop it. Quit being silly. That doesn't make any sense. Now tell me what really happened. And I looked at her and I go, you know what, baby girl? 
That is the appropriate response. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Good night. Thank you very much for coming out. Sepsis and autonomy Or have you escaped from scrutiny And regaled yourself with depravity Now we all see Religion to synthetic frippery Unnecessary In our expanding global cultural efficiency